Today's topic is small step for IRS, giant leap for taxpayer. This is a very fitting topic uh, in light of what's currently going on, where Jeff Bezos is trying to take general public to space. We also think that IRS going to DevOps is an equivalent kind of experience for taxpayer as well. Uh, my name is Amin Kazi, and I am a technical uh, advisor here in IRS. Uh, I have worked for many Fortune 500 companies, and I have been leading tax uh, IRS DevOps journey since 2017. And my co-presenter here is Rupesh. Uh, Rupesh, will you please introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Amin. My name is Rupesh Kumar. I work for Citizen as a solution director, and in my current role as DevOps architect, I have been working and leading the Enterprise DevOps Initiative alongside with Amin. Uh, since 2017, 2015, and uh, and I have uh, pretty much been working with Amin all, alongside in this uh, transformation journey. And uh, prior to working for IRS, I have worked with other federal and commercial sectors. I have worked with telecommunication, financial services, and postal services. So I'm looking forward today to uh, share a lot of good, valuable lesson learns and uh, valuable insight into the IRS DevOps journey. Uh, since when we started to today where we are. Back to you, Amin. Okay. Thanks, Rupesh. So let's go to the next slide. Um, so first question is, what is DevOps? Again, everyone defines DevOps differently. Uh, what we think is DevOps is just another version of lean principles. So how do we get the software, a quality software out to production quickly with all the security built in? So when we started the DevOps journey, we, and as an IRS, divided our team up into the, the six sub teams uh, just to conquer all the areas of DevOps. Uh, first, of course, was CICD team. And that team is responsible for pulling the code out, making sure it's compiles, making sure it's secure, maybe making sure it has a high quality, no, no security issues and everything. And then once uh, we are done, then we get it uh, staged so it can be deployed to the all the environments of the life cycle. The second team was responsible for org transformation. That we thought was the biggest challenge because our organization was not ready for DevOps. We were very slow and we like to make very few deliveries to production. So for us to change, it would require a lot of work and uh, our transformation team was uh, the team which was going to prepare IRS to get to take on this journey. Uh, the, the third initiative was automated testing. Again, as you know, if you want to put the stuff in production fast, then what you really want to do is to make sure you have good ways to test it. And we have been uh, trying to automate all of our testing, and that is definitely one of the great challenges uh, in our organization. Number four is security. Again, security, as you know, a lot of people call DevSecOps because security is in the middle of all. We definitely wanted to move security to the left, so we had a team dedicated to the security aspects of DevOps. The next one is uh, what we call Enterprise Container Platform. Since we know we would like to be able to create the ephemeral infrastructure, which can be created and destroyed, uh, we knew containers would really come in handy and we, want, we dedicated a team which will be responsible for making sure all the projects that are uh, container ready or uh, can get to the containers. The last one is standard stack. In IRS, we have millions of cots uh, available to us. Uh, we know setting up an environment where all the cots that everybody needs would be almost impossible. So standard stack team's responsibility was to pick up the cots which are used by uh, everyone or most of the project and make sure that those cots can be stood up and destroyed with relative ease. And that is what we call standard stack. You may also go in the industry world of it for be infrastructure as code. And we were trying to see that we can stand up the infrastructure and tear it down as needed. So these were like the uh, six pillars of our DevOps journey. And we really think they were all very important, uh, uh, play a very important role in moving any organization towards DevOps. 
with that, uh, let's go to the next slide. So this is our journey at a glance. So we, as I said before, we started uh, in 2017. Our goal in 2017 was how do we, first of all, make everyone recognize what DevOps is and then make sure they uh, like to go, go to that journey, like to uh, go with us on that journey. So with that, we stood up uh, our, our transformation team. And again, we had many lunch and learns, many sessions where we were uh, communicating, educating people, also had some uh, uh, projects which were kind of done uh, POC, uh, proof of concept work with it so we can showcase what it can do. So that was mostly what the, uh, 2017 looked like. Come 2018, we brought in some more projects uh, into the mix and we started uh, making sure that all of our uh, uh, executives are, are, are with us on, on this journey. They, they understand that and they are helping us out with that. Another thing which we are really proud of what we did was we set up a uh, DevOps Federal Interagency Console. We call it DFEC. That is where all the federal agencies, we come together, we talk about it, make sure what works for one agency and how uh, it helped them. And so we can all help each other out in making this journey possible. 2019, we, st uh, we actually started working on a framework that would help us speed up the, uh, the onboarding of the applications because we knew we have more than 300 applications in IRS. Although all of them would not be a candidate for DevOps, but still, many of them would be. And we want, did not want it to spend like a whole year just onboarding 10 applications. So that framework, which we showcased in our uh, uh, De DevOps world as well, and we, we, by the way, we got an award on that in, in 2020, uh, was, that was the framework which helped us onboard a lot more projects very quickly onto the CICD pipeline. Uh, again, I think I, I'm just emphasizing on the same thing over and over that communication is the hardest part. Again, we hosted many outreach events. We had like a CICD summit, Federal DevOps Best Practice Summits, and uh, Enterprise Container Platform Summits. Again, inviting a lot of agencies, a lot of vendors, lots of uh, uh, other people uh, to talk to us, tell us what worked, what didn't work, what worked for us, and share these experiences. That is definitely the big thing. From 2020 to now, again, we have many projects, more projects to go on, and uh, uh, many more uh, things to do, but again, uh, we have been uh, making good progress since then, and we definitely look forward. We have developed a target state architecture and what we, it looks like. Again, we can share that with you at some other time. Uh, but that's like, uh, again, I just want you to guys to see uh, kind of what it took us to get here in the past years. Next slide, please. Okay, so one of the big thing from our CIO is always, what's in it for me? Yeah, you can provision server fast. Yes, you can take an application to production fast. So what does it really mean? So we actually developed some slides which were giving the ROI, which tells you what it does it really means to uh, have all of these capabilities available to us. So on this slide, you may see like uh, four black lines going through it, that kind of tells you the benefit for each of our initiative that I introduced to you on slide four. So if you see on it, it's like uh, benefits for CACD, benefits for containers, standard stack, and automated testing. I Again, there were tons of benefits going to DevOps. Uh, some of the, these are uh, listed here, as you can see with CACD. It used to take application teams more than 100 hours to get the, through all the environments because we have like more than 10 environments that we have to go through uh, for in our life cycle. So an, an application team having to go through all of those environments, it was a big job and it used to take us more than 100 hours. Now with CACD, we can get an application to production 
within four hours. Again, we don't really do that, but that's the capability we do have. Um, again, it shows you all the benefits and thousands of hours of saving with that. The next one I want to focus on is the ECP. Again, on ECP, the containers uh, platform, just for the migrating from RHEL 6, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 uh, to 7 and 8, we thought we need 1800 additional servers to just to make that happen. And once we brought in the containers in the picture, that requirement came down to 200 servers or less than that. And as you can see, that would by itself just save us more than $4 million in savings. Um, for standard stack, as I said before, it is uh, probably very embarrassing to admit it, but in IRS, it takes us almost a year for an AD project application development team to request all the servers that they need in all the environments and everything. So they have to do all of this estimation a year before make the request and hope to get the, all the servers and everything that they need in a year. Uh, the working time here that you might see is 19 to 34, but again, that's like actually the working time. Um, there are many times for the approvals and everything. With standard stack, not just because we have picked some courts which are easily pro provisionable, you, we can create ephemeral infrastructure which can be created and destroyed as needed, and that can be done in just one or two days. So that has just, again, tremendously helped us saving lots of money for each project. Uh, benefit of leveraging automated testing, that uh, I feel like that is the way we are weakest right now. We have few projects which are, are automated tested and we have uh, given some stats on that. Again, it's used to take us just to set up the servers, just to set up and run those uh, uh, automated testing and there were many manual testing involved. It used to take us a whole week and now it, it just takes us few hours to take a project from uh, any place to get it all the way tested so it, it is ready for deployments. So with that, I think I'll hand it over to Rupesh so he can take you to the rest of the slide because he has been our architect and has uh, worked wonderful uh, wonders for us on, on this project. Rupesh, all yours, please. Thank you, Amin, for the kind words. And uh, just piggybacking on what Amin said earlier, um, what is it for me? So that's where, what is it for the taxpayer? Whatever we are investing in IRS and whatever we are doing with the DevOps journey, it should be all worthwhile for the taxpayer. And that's where uh, the COVID-19 and this pandemic, which has been ongoing, has been a testament for the IRS DevOps journey. I'm sure many other organizations were impacted, but uh, IRS was certainly at the forefront of uh, the America Rescue Plan, which was signed in by the president. And uh, as we all are aware, over the period of uh, one and a half year, there have been uh, three rounds of stimulus checks, uh, which has been uh, delivered out to the needy families and the family in need and people who are really struggling with the COVID pandemic. And so far, IRS has delivered over 170 million payments, which, which is uh, kind of accumulating to around $400 billion. And uh, you can imagine that level of uh, work uh, IRS has performed and certainly DevOps is a enabler in making sure that these things happen. So to kind of go over into a couple of things here, like, so what is DevOps? Certainly th there is a um, lot of good insight uh, already, I'm sure for the folks who are listening in and tuning in on this talk today, but at a very high level, DevOps is nothing but a culmination of people, process and technologies. You can't just focus on one and expect that there will be organization transformation. So you have to kind of like carry all three together, the people, the process, and the technology. And that's exactly what we strive to do over this uh, journey from past few years now within IRS. And it's still a long way to go, but we have some good insights to share as Amin was sharing, sharing earlier. And now we have a couple of more things to share here as well. So first and foremost thing is certainly the automation. Try to automate as much as you can, whatever you can. Why? Because automation is the enabler for DevOps. It's making sure that things are getting um, repeated. Uh, things are kind of uh, 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 in, the, in the source code repository. Uh, it can be audited. It can be traced back. Why is that important for the taxpayer? 
it's important because that provides a faster delivery for the taxpayer for the features like the America Rescue Plan, I mean, the uh, recovery plan, sorry. That's the biggest um, testament to uh, the DevOps where the taxpayer were able to get their checks uh, on a timely manner. So improving the experience uh, for the taxpayer is driven by automation. So that's one of the key aspect of what De uh, DevOps delivered in IRS as of today. The second most important thing is to reduce the customization try to remove the server drift or the environment drift. To understand this better, we need to take you a bit into the IRS. IRS is a complex organization. It has over um, many different organizations in organizations. You have a enterprise service operations organization. You have a enterprise service uh, testing organization. You have a application development organization. You have a uh, cyber organization. So how do we make a uh, how do we reduce the variability between these organizations? How do we ensure that the pipeline is delivering the value to the customer hopping through these pipelines? We do have a subsequent session we are presenting, Amin and I are presenting on DevOps World 2021. Um, so please tune in uh, to that uh, session as well, where we'll be talking in depth about how we did uh, 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 things happen. Uh, for IRS, and hopefully that could be a lesson learned for your um, respective organizations as well. Now, why we did that? We did this to bring repeatability, uh, we, uh, uh, to avoid snowflakes. We wanted to make sure that the applications are consistently deployed on any environments. As Amin said earlier, we have many environments in IRS, and there are close to 10,000 plus servers which are currently managed by enterprise operations team. So you can imagine a lot of behind the scene work goes in uh, in order to deliver the value to the taxpayer. But our goal is to uh, garner the increased confidence of the taxpayer when they use our uh, website. So if they want to look at their tax refund, if they want to look at where is my payment, where is my refund amount, they get what they need. So that's the, the key important aspect of it as well. And the, the, the third most important aspect here is security, trying to shift security to the left. Amin was talking about security as one of the initiative in IRS. And this was one of the more focal point of our uh, DevOps journey, making sure that security is plugged in in our CICD pipeline at all the different stages of the pipeline and making sure that we have the security champions and the uh, cyber experts available to provide their guidance to the application developers, uh, to the uh, to the technical uh, leads, to make betterment of their systems. And why is that again important for the taxpayer? What is it for the taxpayer in this? It's again the increased confidence that when the taxpayer trusts with their financial data by uh, filling in the tax information and submitting it to IRS, they 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 require that level of trust from IRS, and that's where. Um, our de DevOps journey has actually proved that by making sure that the security is the focal point of our uh, uh, del delivery value chain. So with that, I will actually move to the next slide where we will be talking a little bit more about how we did this. Um, so here is the enterprise CICD pipeline, which was established as part of this DevOps journey. And Amin has played a critical role in kind of providing us with the uh, in-depth uh, knowledge of IRS, which we brought in uh, to make sure that this pipeline actually provides um, uh, and leverage the pain points um, of the IRS organization and provide them the value add service. So with that, I will actually uh, make your attention look at uh, my cursor over here. So this is the CICD pipeline, which we are talking about. And under the microscope, it looks something like this. So let's quickly go over this. Um, and I want you to take away certain things from this pipeline, which is everything shifts from left to right. There isn't anything which can go into this pipeline from any place else. So everything shifts from left to right. And we are not talking about only the application code. We are talking about the infrastructure code. We are talking about the configuration code. We are talking about the pipeline as code. So our own pipeline is actually as a code. And it, and it is checked in into the source code repository as a first class artifact. What does that mean? It means that it is traceable. And as you might be aware, IRS internal revenue services is also part of the uh, tax commissioner uh, of the US. So we are 
uh, actually accountable for auditing. So we have to take the audits, which can happen at any moment's notice. So we have to make sure that we take this very seriously. So here we have everything traceable back to the source code repository and our CI, which is the continuous integration pipeline, it actually pulls the code from the source code repository. We don't care if your code is in GitHub or RTC or ClearCase or uh, Bitbucket. Our pipeline is written agnostic to that. And we basically take this, uh, the source code through different stages of the uh, continuous integration pipeline, uh, build, compile, code coverage, code quality, security, uh, code analysis, binary scans. And at every stage of this pipeline, if there is any issue uh, with um, the failing of thresholds or any vulnerabilities, the pipeline stops right there uh, and all the hands are on deck to resolve that issue. So that's the critical aspect of the DevOps. We wanted to make sure that we um, uh, uh, inculcate in the uh, in the IRS. It took a while for the mindset to shift, but then now we are seeing the value add of that. And then once the package is built, it is pushed to the artifact repository where we always had one philosophy in our mind, which is build once and deploy anywhere, which basically meant the package should be an intelligent and self-sufficient that it can be deployed anywhere. It can be deployed on-prem, it can deploy on cloud, it can deploy on hybrid cloud, it can deploy on a multiple multi-cloud, or it can in fact deploy on a container on-prem, or it can actually deploy on a server which got spinned up as part of the pipeline and then the application is deployed on top of it. So as you can see, our pipeline is kind of like written in a way that it can provide value add service to the IRS and eventually to the taxpayer to make sure that we are ready from our end to provide the value add uh, service and provide the uh, 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 information to the taxpayer at any given time. So we are, it's not a six months wait before a code can go to production. Uh, at one point in IRS, it used to take um, a few months for an application to actually deliver code to uh, production. Now it takes a matter of 22 minutes and that was proved out by one of an application within IRS. So that's one of an example that we have many more. At this time, this enterprise CICD pipeline is um, servicing over 92 applications um, and it is um, uh, providing them the value add service uh, on a daily basis. And anytime there is an issue with the pipeline, the pipeline stops and the feedbacks uh, loop is uh, uh, provided to all the audience who are responsible to make the, um, uh, make the issue resolved. So that's pretty much here uh, we would like to kind of talk about in terms of the DevOps journey. This journey has certainly not ended. We have just begun. We have many more great things to do. And eventually we are all serving towards the taxpayer and we want to make sure that your money is well spent. And that's where Amin and I come in and we are trying to make this uh, incremental changes uh, possible. With that, I will actually uh, take you to the last slide, which we talk about um, that we are trying to position IRS uh, as a leader in the federal uh, DevOps space. In order to do that, we have partnered with um, the Advanced Technology Academic Research Center, we meet with them periodically. We have working group sessions with them. We deliver white papers and case studies periodically. Uh, we uh, have partnership with USPTO, USCIS, Department of Transportation, Department of Defense. We have uh, great uh, collaboration going on with Nick, Nick Chelain on Iron Bank and uh, the Platform One, which he's currently working on. So our goal is to actually uh, cross collaborate with other agencies and also look inwards within IRS and make our organization uh, key people um, uh, informative and educated in DevOps so that they can uh, be more hands-on and understand the tools and the technology. So a lot of effort is uh, uh, going underneath it. There is a lot of uh, manpower uh, getting in, uh, investing in making these things happen. And we are hoping in the future that IRS uh, uh, can be considered one of the market leader in this DevOps space. So with that said, I will uh, probably um, uh, uh, kind of like uh, have you uh, get a recap from Amin, if Amin has any uh, uh, parting thoughts uh, before we end the presentation today. Hey, Amin? yeah, thanks Rupesh. Uh, again, very well said. 
Uh, yes, we are. Uh, we really want you to, just like Rupesh said, we really like you to attend our other presentation. This one was a very high level presentation just to tell you uh, what we did in, uh, through our journey. Uh, but if you like to know more details about how we got IRS along, because as, as we, as you know, just like any other big organization, IRS is also very siloed. So it was the other presentation that we are doing is how to break silos by staying inside the silos. In that presentation, we'll go into a lot more details on uh, the work that we did. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, you have our names, you can definitely look us up uh, and uh, we will be try to answer any questions that uh, you guys have. Thank you.